Hello and welcome back and today I'm going to take advantage of the Synology DS620 Slim and I'm going to use it to show you guys about some of the performance differences good and bad between RAID 1, RAID 0, SHR, EXT4, the works. Now I'm just at the preliminary recording of this video but chances are this is going to be broken down into multiple parts so if this is part one of many do check out those other parts but at this point of recording i'm not 100 percent certain how many parts there's going to be so what we're going to do straight away is make our way over here into the storage manager you can see here on screen as you can see i've set up three storage pools i've created a raid zero using btrfs as the file system of choice I'm using a RAID 1 with EXT4, and finally an SHR, which is a Synology equivalent of RAID 1, and that is using BTRFS. So, what we've got here in front of us is all three of those storage pools, and what we're gonna be doing moving forward is doing a bunch of tests using these test files and these mapped network drives. As you can see, there's the RAID 0 BTRFS, there's the SHR BTRFS and the RAID 1 EXT4. I've already assigned these. And in terms of capacity, this device is fully populated with SSDs. I didn't want to rely too much on mechanical hard drives. And of course, because this NAS here utilizes two and a half inch media, I am using um, kind of semi prosumer, one could say, SSDs via SATA. So the RAID 0 will obviously show more capacity than that of the SHR and the RAID 1 because uh, RAID 0 combines hard drives while RAID 1 mirrors them as does SHR with a drive of redundancy. So what I'm going to try to do is have the resource monitor on screen at all times and the first thing I'm going to do of course is just do a straightforward benchmark test of these drives. I'm screen recording with OBS so it's worth highlighting that this will impact performance a little bit. But I'll open up AJA. I'm doing a one gigabyte test file at 1080p. And the first drive I'm going to test is the RAID 0 um, 2 SSD combination here, RAID 0 BTRFS, and run that test. Now, a little bit of background about my setup for this video. Rather than use a switch or an existing network that might present um, any kind of small difference in the background there, I've decided to directly connect my laptop to the Synology NAS, directly point to point via a LAN cable. So no switch, no network interference. This is directly connected between the NAS and my laptop as a separate internet ether, uh, ethernet connection. As you can see there, the IP, the 169 IP. And we're seeing their performance there over one GBE of around 94 and somewhere in the 80s there. Now, once again, remember, screen recording will have its impact on performance. And it's worth highlighting that we are using one gigabit Ethernet and one gigabyte 1080p files. If we were using smaller files and a change in this test, then these numbers would be very different. So we tested that first one. Now let's check the SHR BTRFS uh, volume, it's a snapshot I should say, and volume. And we're seeing a slight lower performance there. Once again, we kind of going to expect that when you're comparing RAID 0 to RAID 1. Over 1 GBE, these should max out, but of course, because we're using denser test files, those numbers aren't quite as high as we check, um, that we would see. Now, rather than run AJA for three or four times, we're not going to focus too much on AJA. This is only part one of many individual tests that we're going to conduct. Uh, we're going to do the RAID 1 EXT4 for file format here and we're going to move forward on those very similar results um, i would argue of course that the raid zero so far has presented the best read and write in a single wave of instruction and with the uh, the btrfs um, shr providing the second best performance and right now the raid one on ext4 has seemingly produced the slowest results overall now, I'm going to count the AJA testing. Over here, we've got those network tests that we've done so far. Let's maximize that. And we can see all of those tests that we've done. Memory utilization has been pretty low so far. Network access, as you can see there, the difference, that was obviously there. The RAID 1 SHR over here is the SHR BTRFS. 
and over here we have the RAID 1 EXT4. So the performance, there's been more network activity during those tests. And the rest of it, we can see volume access. We're not going to focus too much on those during the AJA testing. Let's minimize that down. And next, we'll make our way down here to those network drives that we created. Now, I've mapped one network drive for each of these. And what I'm going to do is one by one, copy these files in. Now these are my test files. There's just over 20 gigabytes here to play with. The ISOs are 10 files of either media-based ISO DVD. Some of them are like the Android VMs we used, Ubuntu, that sort of thing. So that's 10 big files. And in the MISC files, we have over four, over four and a half thousand individual files, PNGs, docs, the works, and only resulting in 4.67 gigabytes. So again, that's loads of small files there that we're going to be transferring via to, uh, onto a network drive one by one onto this device. And we're going to see which one does it quickest and also how it affects the performance. Now I'm going to have to fast forward a bit during the course of this video, but first up is the RAID 0 BTRFS. There's the folders that already, already exist in there. So we're going to create a brand new folder and we're going to call this one test. We're going to go into that folder, we're going to go there, we're going to copy these files, and we're going to copy these, we're going to keep that performance on screen there. If we shut the performance manager and we reopen it, it should, in theory, reset the performance manager for us so we can see a clean, fresh slate while copying this data. Now I'm going to click paste now and see how long it takes and how that affects system performance starting now. Also, we're going to have a stopwatch there on screen just to give us something to measure by. And again, we're not going to rely on this too much, this clock, because, of course, you know, there is going to be a certain difference there while I'm copying and pasting and stuff like that. And I'm sure there are quicker ways for me to copy paste using hotkeys, but I'm not going to be utilizing them for this video and doing send tos simply because I want you guys to see the copying I'm doing. But straight away, unsurprisingly, we are maxing out that Ethernet connection. Um, straight away, the network there is pretty high up, and we're already at a good 20% done in this transfer. Memory utilization is going up uh, not too high here. I think we're about 20% memory utilization. And we can go a little deeper into this. If we go into the network there, we can see that. And if we move down, we can see the performance continuing on this device. Down here, we'll move that, keep the clock on screen, as well as that right happening uh, as we speak. I was going to say right now, but saying word twice, can't do that. And I think I'm going to fast forward now to the completion of this exercise to give you some idea how long this is taking. Now, I'm going to be repeating this on both of the other uh, mapped network drives and then after that we're going to conduct some internal read and write performance tests of these two setups um, of these three setups I should say so let's fast forward and see how they go and we can see here as that copying draws to a close on our RAID 0 drive we can see that at the top here the performance numbers have dipped dramatically the minute we've gone into all of those smaller files and the amount of work being done to transfer those files has dramatically resulted in performance dips but we're coming into completion here at just over four minutes and we're going to get the correct time here as it finishes of around 4 minutes and 14 seconds to transfer that data onto our RAID 0 BTRFS. So we'll get that reset for the next transfer. And we can see that those files have been carried over onto that map to network drive there, the RAID 0 BTRFS. So let's make our way back. And this time we're going to go for the SHR BTRFS. Once again, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to create our test folder. We're going to get ready by copying our data here. We're going to minimize that. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to put the resource manager back on. And while this continues, we are going to talk about the previous drive's results. Uh, so once again, this is going to be copying into a BTRFS file system SHR RAID 
storage pool. So let's get that started. One, two, three, go. So as this transfer carries on, let's talk about the results that we saw in the previous version, uh, the previous storage pool. Now, we definitely saw those big files being handled very, very well and very easily indeed. Obviously, the read and writes were, you know, we were expecting them to be quicker um, on that RAID 0. So we should hopefully see a similar time on this because we are, of course, still using a 1 GBE connection. But already, straight away, I can see that the network performance is slightly different on this Ray, um, this BTR FS SHR volume. Now, while this carries on, I'm going to quickly double check that OBS is still recording, which it is. Um, also, my backup mic is recording. Yes, it is. Things are going very well indeed. And we're going to fast forward to the completion of this SHR BTR FS volume to see how that has gone. And as the second stage of tests close in, we can see that the time is going to be remarkably similar to that of the previous test. We're looking at around 4 minutes, and again, 4 minutes 14, which laughingly is exactly the same as that previous test. So, it'll be silly of us not to complete these tests all the way to fruition, and we're going to finally go for that RAID 1 EXT4 based setup. Once again, for the final time, let's get that up there. Let's get the test done. Let's right click there. Let's go to copy. We're going to close that down there. We're going to create our fancy pants folder. We're going to go into there, create test. And in theory, this should be quicker than the SHR, but the fact that they've been identical so far is telling me that these are just maximizing that 1GBE connection, which we kind of expected, but with the complexity of some of these files, I was hoping that would at least cause a little bit of difficulty somewhere along the line. But apparently this device has still managed to keep things moving on all of them. So let's get that test there. Let's get rid of that folder. And let's start the transfer the third time. Once again, this is a RAID 1 EXT4. Go. Keep that there. Now, if you'd looked at the result of the previous test, you'll see that it was very similar indeed. Though I will say that it did seem to have a little bit more difficulty at the beginning and gained ground later. So I can only assume, looking at those charts from the previous test, that the reason for that was that the harder files were done later and some of the not the harder files the larger files were done later and the smaller files were conducted first but the more astute of you may have noticed straight away that there's been no high early spike as there was in the previous tests but at 20 percent here being done at 30 seconds that's not too shabby but straight away i'm looking up here and whereas the other tests seem to really hit this spike up here really early on in terms of data transfer, we're not seeing that this time. What we're seeing is a consistent 100 megs high, and now we're starting to see those little tiny files, I think. Oh, no, we're not. We're still looking at an ISO. I do take that back. But what we'll do once again is we're going to fast forward to the completion of this RAID 1 EXT4 volume to see how it fares against the other two. And as the test draws to a close, I was really hoping that that RAID 1 EXT4 was going to be quicker, and it has been quicker, but only by the tiniest margin. And right now, as the RAID 1 finishes, it has turned out to be the quickest of all, but only by a matter of around two to four seconds, which I don't think is necessary enough to call it an out and out winner, but with both all with all three of them taking somewhere between four minutes ten and four minutes fourteen, I think it's worth highlighting that in terms of one GBE transmission, uh, you know, communicating and sending just over twenty gig of mixed files to the NAS, all three did not have an inherent advantage over the others. But that isn't the only test I want to perform today. 